Spencer Lazara, MMAinterviews.tv here at RFA. Cub Swanson, fresh off your victory there uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago, uh, over Dennis Seaver. Very impressive, as usual, uh, of late. I mean, talk about that win, I guess, first off. You sound surprised. Not at all. Uh, uh, it was a good win. Uh, the fight played out pretty much like I thought it was. Uh, he came trying to knock my head off. And I moved a lot, and uh, luckily I got out of the way, and he got tired and uh, put him down. Was that kind of game plan going in would be to maybe not exchange quite as much early, knowing that he's he's a big, powerful guy really early in fights? Uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I didn't anticipate him to swing that hard uh, early in the fight, and uh, because I thought he was going to, you know, just try to keep a high tempo, like a high volume of strikes. But I'm sure because I said I was going to knock him out, he, he decided to opt for uh, heavier strikes, and that tired himself out. So when he took me down, actually, I took myself down in the first round, and uh, uh, when he was holding me, I could hear him breathing in my ear. And I was just thinking, okay, just calm yourself down and, and let him tire himself out. Yeah, I mean, your experience is something, I guess, that uh, you know that in a fight, you know, what to do exactly in those, in those opportunities. Yeah, I guess, you know, now you can call me a veteran since I've been around for a bit. Uh, those kinds of things that you learn, you know, and, and uh, experience. And uh, I'm able to be a little bit smarter these days. Where do you feel like now you fit in the division? I mean, it's sort of uh, pretty crazy stuff going on in the division. Uh, Aldo might be hurt. You got Ricardo Lamas. Where do you fit in? Uh, I like what Fight Magazine has me, uh, number two. You know, right behind Aldo. So, uh, screw everybody else if they don't. You know, got me right there. And uh, you know, we're fighters. You, I gotta say, I'm the best, and uh, that's the way I feel. So I just want the biggest fights available. Which we were just saying, maybe potentially is Frankie Edgar. I guess is an option at the moment. Yeah, him. Or um, you know, obviously, I want the rematch with Lamas, and I want the title fight with Aldo. And uh, if I can't get one of those two fights, then I'd settle for Frankie feel although you know it's coming off some injuries in that recent fight so maybe that fight with Lamas is something that can be just a number one contender you'd be uh, definitely happy with that yeah I mean because they they seem to want me to fight uh, this year and and you know I don't know if Aldo would be ready by then I'm pretty sure he wouldn't so if uh, they want to give me another fight and give me the number one contender fight uh, like officially then uh, I'd do it you know I'd love to do it I like to fight and you know I'm making decent money nowadays I'm I'm not injured anymore and uh, uh, you know I've been able to, to buy a house and do some things and feel good about that and uh, so uh, fighting is my job and I, I just want to entertain the fans. Is it a little bit surreal having that sort of come to a head with your fighting career I know you've been through the struggles through thick and thin here and here you are finally with the growth the, the sport growing and you're able to support yourself and, and, and be seen by fans I'm sure is kind of kind of crazy as well. Yeah I actually feel fortunate that I that I've taken the harder road um, because uh, I'm getting this you know a little bit of exposure later in my career where a lot of guys blow up on the scene they, they get all this attention this money and they they don't handle it well and I was left to really not have very much and be looked past and and uh, you know I'm standing I've been in the division forever and I stand next to a guy just coming off the ultimate fighter um, you know maybe a couple years ago and and people are lining up to talk to them and, and I'm like, you know, they haven't even done anything yet, you know, and just the way it is. And so those guys get their fame real quick and, and not, it's not necessarily a good thing. So I, I like I said, I feel fortunate that I've had the hard road first and I feel like it's my time right now and uh, I, I'm smarter because of it. Uh, I know how to handle my, my money better. I'm making better choices. Um, I'm training smarter and uh, I'm just an all around better fighter right now. Do you feel like you're a very different fighter than, yeah, it was my next question, as opposed to before? And, and why do you think that is? Or do you feel like things are just kind of coming together? I and mean, what, what is it that's made you sort of have this meteoric rise, I guess, to, to the top of the division? Um, really, I, I feel like I'm the same fighter. I'm just finally coming into my own. Um, what I've been saying is like somebody who's like, let's say, say a basic wrestler with a couple strikes and that's his whole game and they're just a pressure fighter. That, that's not a whole lot to figure out. You know, you can figure that out pretty quick and, uh, and, and peak, you know, in your career. What I was trying to do was really to be a, a complete fighter, wrestling, judo, kickboxing, boxing, angles, switching stance, um, trying to learn all these techniques. And it took me a very long time, you know? And uh, you, you start to do good in one area and not great in the other, and you're like, you know, up and down. And uh, c consistency is huge in this sport. So now that I'm actually 
firing on all cylinders. I feel good. My confidence is high. I, I, I just I feel unstoppable right now. Working with the boxers that you do, does that make you feel like you have the best hands in your division and potentially some of the best hands in the UFC? Oh, definitely. Um, that was like one of my biggest things is early in my career is I would brawl and I knew jujitsu. And I was like, I, I did Muay Thai for a long time. And I just, they were like, oh, when you're standing on the outside, throw kicks. And when you get inside, just clinch. I'm like, what about that middle range boxing? I want to feel comfortable to stand in front of somebody and be able to move and, and, and not be scared, you know? And uh, now I feel that way. I feel like I can stand toe to toe with anybody. I'm not worried about it. We can wrestle, we can box, we, wherever. You know, I feel confident and, and that's huge. Your brother, obviously a little bit disappointed right now. His second fight where he was winning the fight. And, and got submitted. I mean, how, how do you think he's feeling right now? And, and are you at all, I guess, frustrated with that as well? Uh, you know, it, it's always hard to, to take the losses because we take them as a team, you know, but uh, he's got tons of talent. Um, we know what he needs to work on. Uh, you know, he had, he had a real tough camp this fight and he showed up and he threw down and he was winning the fight. And uh, it's just minor things, you know, nobody's undefeated in this sport. And, uh, you know, if he wants to keep fighting, which I really think he does. Uh, he's going to be a, a great fighter down the road. Anything else you want to say, Cup? Uh, just thanks to all the fans. And if you want to see me fight for the title, then you got to text or tweet Dana and, and uh, let him know what's up. Definitely one of the most exciting fighters in the entire UFC, much less the featherweight division. Mr. Cub Swanson, I'm Spencer Lazara. Thanks for watching MMAinterviews.tv. Hey, this is Ariane Celeste. This is Uriah Faber. This is Glover Teixeira. This is Dan Henderson. You're watching MMA Interviews. MMA Interviews. You're watching MMAinterviews.tv.